Hi everyone, so today I'm going to talk about LFOs, what they do, what they are, and check out a few examples of how you can use LFOs to give life to your sound, to make it a little less to the grid and a bit more dynamic and moving. So let's start with an analog instrument just to see what it is that the LFOs actually do. I'm going to take that, just use one oscillator, uh, a sine wave, just personal preference. And let's see an example of what it does. So this is a straight up sine wave. And over here, you're going to want to turn on the LFO. Go back to the sine wave. And let's see what it does when I turn up the LFO, when I apply it to the sound wave. So there you go. We have the vibrato effect. If we go back to the LFO section, we can play with the rate. So how fast or slow, very slow. We can change the waveform, triangle, rectangle. You can play with the width. 50% is just the square wave noise. This one's interesting because it automates the pitch in a random uh, pattern. And another noise. So already this is getting pretty interesting. Then let's see what it does when applied to the amp, so the volume. Again, straight uh, sine wave. We go to the amp section. Let's put some LFO on the panning. Already it's panning. The wave we've selected is noise. Let's see. Maybe it's a little more obvious with the sine wave. And then you can also apply LFO to the level or the volume. This is going to give a tremolo effect. All right, so that's the basic thing of what it does. Now let's go to see um, another example of what it can do in a, for example, on a hi-hat. If you want to give some movement and some life to your hi-hat. What I've done here is that I've selected the 808 kit from the drums. Uh, I drew a little pattern, a little MIDI pattern, which sounds basically like this. So as you can see, the hi-hats are, you know, very much th the same. They're very much to the grid, kind of robotic a little bit. But if we go to the hi-hat section over here and turn on the LFO, we can start playing with the pitch. And again, you can adjust the rate. You can change the wave shape. Another important thing is that you're going to want to take off this re-trigger because as you can see, it doesn't really, um, we can't really hear the LFO if the re-trigger is on because what it happens is that it re-triggers the LFO every, every time there's a new MIDI note. And since there's a MIDI note every beat, well, we can't really hear it. So take it off. Now let's go back to see what it does to the pitch. So you can see the pitch modulating. You can also modulate the volume. Let's put it at 30%. Let's 
go back to zero. You can apply LFO on the panning. And you can do a combination of all these things. As you can see, it's giving some life to our sound over here. You can really hear it. And there's other ways you can apply LFOs, for example, on filters. This is, um, again, just an instrument. This is on off the square wave. So there's filters. There's also here another example on panning again. The auto pan is basically an LFO that uh, uses panning. So that's it. You can really get creative with the LFOs um, by applying them to all sorts of things, whether it's hi-hats, drums, synths, and you can really start getting some movement in there, getting some uh, some groove to your stuff, and it won't sound as grid-based and as rigid.